Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Hopefully I'm on the right page this time. <laughs> I did that one, no, twice? I think I did that twice before. But, oh my gosh, you guys, I can't find it on... I need to be able to see your comments. So that's why I'm trying to bring it up on my page and I'm not seeing it. Okay, here we go. This is always the quirkiness of going live. Okay, I've got it. Woohoo! All right. I'm here. I got it right. How are you guys? I can see your comments, so feel free to jump in and say hi. I love this rain. It's a rainy day here in Pittsburgh. It's my favorite kind of day. I was going to ride my bike, but that's not going to happen, but that's okay. We have had no rain whatsoever, so this is good. So what's everybody up to today? We're going to stamp. Are you ready to stamp? So before we get to the stamping, I want to... Um, show you that the stamp and cut and emboss machine is now available. I've been using it for a month. I love it. And I'm having a special. So for the whole month of September, if you order the cut and emboss machine from me in my store, you can pick any embossing folder for free. I've already had several people take advantage of that. So I think it's a really good deal. I love our embossing folders. There's a lot of options in the annual catalog. Um, they're towards the back, I want to say somewhere around like page 180, 185, I think. So check those out and um, you can pick one of them for free. If you add on the magnetic cutting plate, I will throw in a pack of Stampin' Dimensionals for free too. Stampin' Dimensionals are my favorite adhesive to use with die cuts. Hi, Sharon. So um, that's why I think I'm going to throw them in with that. But the magnetic cutting plate, you actually don't need to have this in order to use the stamp and cut and emboss machine. This comes with all the plates that you're going to need to emboss and die cut right out of the box. What the magnetic cutting plate does is it's a plate. It's 100% magnetic and our dies are metal. So they will stick to that magnetic cutting plate and be very secure on your cardstock when you run it through the die cutting machine. So it's just, you know, a little tool to en enhance your die cutting experience. So if you're interested in a new die cutting and embossing machine, um, go ahead to my store and pick one up and then email me which embossing folder you want. And in mid-October, I'll ship those to everybody. Okay, next up is this Get and Go Starter Kit promotion. So. If you want to get a 20% discount on your Stampin' Up! supplies, your craft supplies, becoming a member of my Joyful Stamper team is the best way to do that. And then in September, they're having an additional special. So for $99 um, plus tax, you will get to pick out $125 of product of your choice. And it can be a Stampin' Cut and Emboss machine. You can put that in your starter kit. But they're also going to throw in this card... Um, card kit, 16 cards with the envelopes. You get the Queen Anne's Lace and So Much Love stamp sets and you get a package of rhinestones. So this is worth an additional $50. So that's $175 worth of product for $99 and it ships for free and they throw in a code for a free paper pumpkin kit, which is our monthly stamp um, kit subscription. So that's a pretty good deal. I mean, that's what, like $200 for worth of stuff for $99 no shipping, which is like another $20 discount. And then you get a 20% discount on all your orders going forward as long as you stay an active demonstrator. And the team that I'm on is so much fun, guys. It's so much fun. It's what keeps me going. I love being in a community of other stampers. So if you're interested, talk to me about that. And then the fall paper pumpkin kit, the sign up deadline is September 10th. That's coming up soon. Um, how cute is that box? I love that. I love fall colors. So this kit looks like it's going to be a lot of fun and there's always tons of alternate ideas. So if you don't, you know, aren't quite wowed by the projects in that month's kit, there's so many other ways to use it. So any of those options are good. Okay. So I had a prize last week um, for sharing this Facebook video and it was a text, tasteful textiles 3D embossing folder. And Sharon, I'm glad you're on here because I drew your name. So 
if you can email me your address within two weeks of today's live class to claim it, I will send this to you. So congratulations, Sharon. And I'm going to mail it in a fun purple mailer. So you can look for that to brighten up your mailbox. I'm so happy to give that to you. This week's prize, I have a package of in color enamel dots. Um, Magenta Madness, Just Jade, Misty Moonlight, Cinnamon Cider, Bumblebee. So to win these, um, for a chance to win them, just share the video. You have to hit that share button. And then what you have to do is type the word shared in the comments because Facebook otherwise does not show me who shares. I see the number of shares, but not who did it. So hit the share button, then come back and type uh, shared in the comments to this original Facebook Live video. And I will draw a winner at next week's live for the in color enamel dots. This helps me out so much guys. So if you like these videos and you like my projects, then please share. And, um, yeah, I'm so appreciative of all that help. So, okay. So oddly enough, it's August, but I thought we would use the snowflake wishes bundle. Um, with these dies and the stamp set and I just couldn't wait to play with it so I busted it out I have two cards for you today one is oh thank you Mary thank you for sharing and thanks for being here and we're gonna learn how to do a bridge fold card let me show you that one that's the first one we're going to do so it's this card here let me take my post-it note with my notes off the back so that's the front view this is the top view. I love fun folds that are really easy to make and they fold flat for mailing. Now you can see in my little demo here, I didn't glue this on quite right. So it's a little bit of a little bump there, but I'm going to show you when I make the card with you guys an easier way <laughs> to line it up perfectly straight, but this folds to fit in a standard envelope. So, and then the person can get it and display it. So that's always fun when you can do that, right? So let it let us get started. I have my stamps out. Let me get my little kit here. Now I know it looks like a lot of pieces for this card, but um, don't worry, it's all going to come together really, really nice. And I did do some die cutting ahead of time. Now I am using Misty Moonlight. I love this blue. It's like a faded denim. And we have some pieces of Whisper White cardstock here. And then I'm going to use some patterns from the Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. So there's a front and a back to them. I'm going to be using this Snowflake pattern, but this is the back side to that one. And I love this one here. It's like a watercolor mix of all our blues with some water splashed into it to get those water spots. And then that's the back side of that one, okay? So I just, I love the mix of blues in these ones, and we're going to do this. Now, I know there's a lot of dimensions to this. I have a project sheet that I'm going to post in the description to this video and it is going to have all the dimensions that you need for these pieces so you don't have to worry about writing them down because truthfully I can't remember them in my head anyways right now. Okay, so we're going to work first with Balmy Blue and you can see these edges are distressed. I'm going to do the same thing with this piece right here by using the blade of my paper snips. So are you guys enjoying your Thursday? Have you had a good week? This is a good day here in Pittsburgh for tea. I'm not a coffee drinker, never have been, but it's a tea kind of day for sure. So um, it just ends that, so doing that with the paper snips just adds like a little bit of roughness to that that I really, really like. And we're gonna take some liquid glue and start gluing these pieces on. Now the idea for this bridge fold card came from my team leader, Lissa Zwalonik of Song of My Heart Stampers. You guys might know of her, you probably do. Sweetest, sweetest team leader ever. I love being on her team. And I've been with her now for about seven years, eight years, I think. So I'm gluing these skinny strips of designer series paper to both of those balmy blue pieces. Okay, and I'm gonna set those aside. The next thing I'm going to do is glue this back piece to another piece of balmy blue cardstock that's also been distressed with my paper snips. Sharon, you ordered another pack of it. Yeah. Wow, so you already went through your first pack. What did you make with it? 
I'm curious. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside for when we assemble the card together. Now this piece, these are going to, this is going to be the bridge piece that spans across our card right here. So I'm going to stamp my greeting on this in Night of Navy ink, and I am going to use Snowflake Wishes for a Merry Christmas. So let me ink that up in Night of Navy. And it's a clear stamp so I can see exactly where I'm going to stamp it. Now I'm going to decorate the left side of this with some snowflakes. So I want to make sure that I stamp on the right side of this piece right here. Perfect. Perfect. And I'm going to glue that to that. I'm ready to actually start working on Halloween projects. I got the Magic in the Night Suite, and I have some ideas for a triangle luminary. Um, I'd like to make a wreath. I'm going to set this piece aside for now, too, and we're going to do some stamping on the back piece. So if you look at the back of this, I have a Whisper White piece right there. And let me see which piece I'm using for that. I've got three of them here, and I forget which size I'm using for this one. Nope, too big. Okay, it's this one. This is where you would write your message. So you could leave that off if you tend to be wordy, which I kind of am. I normally don't stamp inside my cards, but I liked it. Because I thought if you're looking at the card from the back, it dresses it up a little bit. But there's still room to sign your name and say, Merry Christmas or whatever. You made a bunch of Christmas cards. Wow, you're ahead of the game, Sharon. <laughs> Sometimes I have to be careful about making Christmas cards because if I start too early... Then by the time Christmas gets here, I'm so tired of it. I don't want to be tired of Christmas. I want that Christmas magic. So I'm going to stamp this little flurry of snowflakes in balmy blue on the corners of this back piece here. Just like that. And I'm going to leave this open because I am going to use it to make some snowflakes. Then I'm going to stamp May Your Season Sparkle. And I'm going to do that in Night of Navy. And I'll stamp that right in the middle. There we go. I love Night of Navy. It's such a classic blue. Okay, set that piece aside now. Now let's, or actually let's stamp our snowflakes. Let's stamp our snowflakes. Okay, so we're gonna stamp this big one in Balmy Blue ink. And I'm inking it up and I'm gonna put it right here and I'm gonna die cut this out there we go and now I'm going to use this snowflake stamp out what I like about this set is it's got a million different snowflakes so I'm thinking how fun would it be to do like a snow flurry collage for a background for a card. This is Night of Navy ink. Okay. Now, one thing I did do is I took some a water painter, squeeze out a little bit. Now I have the old Aqua Painter. We have a new set called um, their Water Brushes, and I'm just brushing a little bit of water over this because I want to kind of blur those lines a little bit. I just want a really light watercolor look there. I like how this sort of blurs the ink. I think it's fun. I mean, when I think of a snowfall, I think of the world being quiet and hushed, and so I just like this look. That looks good. And then normally you'd have a paper towel here, but I forgot one, <laughs> so we're going to use my hand. And I'm going to do the same thing with this balmy blue one. See if we can just lightly add some color. I mean, color water. Oh, I went a little bit too heavy there. Squeezed out a little bit. But that's all right. No snowflake is absolutely 100% perfect, right? So we're going to embrace it. Sharon, what? 165 cards? Aw. Oh my gosh, I'm sure they're going to love, love, love getting them. I'm going to set this aside to dry for a little bit, and while it's drying, we're going to go ahead and score our cardstock for our bridge fold. So, okay, I'm bringing out the contraband, guys. My Martha Stewart Simply Scored board. 
which Stampin' Up! does have a scoring board. It's called Simply Scored. So you can get that. You can use whatever you have. You know, there's different different versions out there. Okay, so this is, this this Misty Moonlight piece measures four and a quarter inches by eight inches. You're going to put the eight inch piece at the top of your scoreboard. And we are going to score with a bone folder at one and a quarter inch. I always like to go over the score lines twice. Two and a half inches, just to make sure that I got them nice and deep. Five and a half inches, and remember I have a project sheet that will list all these measurements. Six and three quarters is the last one. So we have four score lines that we're making there. And now we're done with that. And now we can fold. So the way we're gonna fold is these two lines here are gonna get folded in. And we're gonna crease those really good with that bone folder. Whoop, I folded that a little bit crooked. Let's straighten that out. It's still crooked. I have no idea how I scored crooked, but I must have. Okay, so now I scored that or folded that in. Now these two outer score lines, fold it in and you're gonna fold it back. Same thing on this right side. Fold in where you already folded and fold that one back. And it's gonna look like this from the top. So speaking of sending cards to nursing homes and residential living centers, I am, um, we're gonna glue our panels on now. Whoops, I accidentally turned my light off, there we go. Um, I just got the green light, I'm so excited. I just got the green light to start sending in my cards to a local uh, residential living center here. They were not accepting any donations, but I just emailed them and she said, we're gonna glue this one to the middle. And you can put it either way you want. I'm gonna put the darker color blue on the bottom. There we go. And I'm going to, um, I'm so excited because I have stacks and stacks and stacks of cards. I mean, I've just been creating this whole time, you know? And I've been sending them out, I've been selling them, but I've been creating far more than I have been able to sell or mail out. Now these two panels are gonna go on the outermost um, left and right panels right there. And she said, bring them in, Nicole. So I'm so excited. I just have to get them in their little plastic clear envelopes and I will get them dropped off. So, was it six months now of card making? That's quite, quite a stash whenever you do this as your job and as your hobby. They were overflowing. I actually set up a separate Facebook page to sell my cards because um, people were asking me, what do you have? And so I thought, well, this is a good place to showcase it. So, so I did. Handmade Cards by the Joyful Stamper. Okay, so now we've glued our panels on. We're gonna glue this back panel on right there. And then we're gonna die cut our snowflakes. It always amazes me the different ways you can fold cardstock because I always think, okay, okay, I've seen it all. 20 years I've been stamping and scrapbooking, I've seen it all, but nope. Then I see some new idea on the internet and I'm just like, wow, look what you can do with paper. This is incredible. Okay, now this is how I'm gonna glue this bridge on. I'm gonna leave this part unfolded here and I'm gonna fold that left side in. And then what I'm going to do is glue my bridge fold down to my card like this. So you wanna make sure that you put glue only on the left side and only on the right side because you don't need it in the middle. So I'll put a little bit on the edges. Make sure my card is laid out right. And then I'm going to adhere this. I'll hold it, give it some pressure for a few seconds so that I make sure it sticks. And then it will pop up nicely. Now that's how you can ensure that it folds flat to fit into your envelope. So now we need to decorate this. We need to make it pretty. Now, I went ahead of time and I die cut out some snowflakes with balmy blue glimmer paper. 
And this is all part of the Snowflake Wishes Suite. Snowflake Splendor Suite, I'm sorry. I need to pull out my die cut machine, so let's move this aside. We're gonna build some snowflakes. And we need to die cut these two guys here. Get my plates. So there's my base plate and these are all numbered so it's really easy to tell what your sandwich is going to be and the directions are printed right on that base plate so since we're die cutting we're gonna use these instructions up here using with a thin die we've got our base plate one now we need the thin die adapter plate two I'm gonna put that in there then I need the cutting plate three and I'm gonna put that on there and you can see I've been using mine a lot it's got all the cut marks in it and then I'll put my snowflakes on here, and now I gotta grab the dies. There they are. Okay. Now, if I had the magnetic cutting plate, these would snap right in place. Am I in camera? I hope so. These would snap right into place, and they wouldn't be moving at all. I don't have the magnetic cutting plate yet. I'm gonna be ordering it at the end of the month when I also order everybody's embossing folders. Um, that they got for free with my cut and emboss machine special. Now I'm gonna put the base, pl the second plate three on top and I'm gonna run this through. And it turns really easily. So if you have arthritis or hand issues, you'll like this machine. Remove the plates. I'm gonna remove these dies and my snowflakes will be cut out. Now we haven't seen the last of that machine yet because we're gonna do something with it and it's so, so pretty. That's our next card. So pretty. I was actually cheering to myself when I was making the next card. <laughs> do you guys ever talk to yourself whenever you stamp? All right, let's build our beautiful snowflakes. This one is going to go in the back just like that. I just love what that watercoloring did to these snowflakes. Simple little tricks. Get my glue coming out here. And I'm just going to put glue on the center of my snowflake because I want my edges to kind of curl up there a little bit. I like the elements on my card to just look natural. Okay. We're going to stack these pieces. So this snowflakes on the bottom this one's gonna go offset on the top and then in the middle and this one's going to go on the top and I'm going to use glue dots because I found that glue dots work best with glimmer paper and with the festive felt sheet packs that are in our holiday mini catalog if you haven't gotten any of that felt you need to add it to your next order because I have been playing with it and I used it as a background, like a instead of a cardstock layer, I just cut a piece of the felt to use it as a layer for those sweet little gnomes that are in there. I haven't showed that card on my blog yet, but I will. And I use it to make snowflakes, and the felt is nice and thick, so I like all the dimension, and it holds its shape really well too. So I've made this snowflake, and I'm gonna stick it to that. Oh, I need to put my glue dots away. I'm gonna put it, bring it back. a glue dot on the back and we're gonna stick that right to the left that's why we left that space there on the left hand side okay but we're still not done I'm gonna pull out these blue adhesive back gems and what I did notice in the catalog is they're actually two different um, shades of blue so this side is darker and this side is lighter so you get two different tones in there and I'm gonna add some to my card Let's see, I'm leaving that blank and I'm going to add some just up here to highlight that snowflake. And I think one more. The rule of thirds, or the odd numbers are more pleasing than even when you're making things. i got to move this charger cord here. I keep hitting it. Sorry if the phone's moving trying to get this cord out of the way okay I think that did it okay so that's the bridge fold card isn't that cute folds flat and I just think of all the possibilities like the poinsettia set that we have would look 
gorgeous with this. You could put a poinsettia there and another one here in place of these snowflakes. <laughs> as long as we don't answer ourselves. Oh, Sharon. <laughs> Sometimes I talk to the dog, though. I think that'd be more acceptable, right? Lily, she always just looks at me and agrees with me. That's what's great about a dog. So I just, I just love this fold. So I hope you guys will give this a try. If you do, send me a photo of what you make because I love showing other people's projects on my Facebook page and on my blog. You know, different styles, different takes on things. It's always fun to, to look at. So that's card number one. That's called the Bridge Fold card, and it's from Lissa Zwalonik, my awesome team leader. Now I will bring in card number two, and it still uses the Snowflake um, Splendor Suite. So this one... I was inspired by the holiday mini catalog. There was a sample in there and I changed a few things up, but what really got me excited about this card was this embossed vellum. It almost looks like heat embossing, but it's not. It's just a clear piece of vellum cardstock. And our vellum cardstock is so thick that you can do this technique and you don't have to worry about the paper tearing. So. Lots of gorgeousness on this card. We're going to get started on it, and I'll show you. Pull out my kit here. I love this color of pool party for winter cards. So, so, so pretty. So we're going to do all the stamping first so that I can just do all the embossing and die cutting at one time. Uh, let me see what we need here. Okay. There's actually not a whole lot of stamping on this particular card. So what we need is we're going to use Pool Party and we're going to use Misty Moonlight. But I actually don't have the Misty Moonlight stamp pad. So I'm going to use my Misty Moonlight stamp and write marker. Sometimes I just I find it more economical to invest in the stamp and write markers than the ink pads. You can get all five colors of the new ink colors for $15 which is a lot less expensive than buying the five ink pads. So it's a good way to try the colors to see if you're going to like them first before you invest in the ink pads. Because, I mean, it's really easy to color on your stamps. Okay, so I'm going to do this one in Misty Moonlight. And I'm using the brush tip of this Stampin' Write marker. There's so many techniques you can do with our Stampin' Write markers. I could color this snowflake, you know, three different shades of blue if I wanted to. Oh my gosh, my dog, sorry. She heard my husband come in from the porch where his office was at. Lily, Lily, Lily. Oh, I, she thinks somebody entered our house. Lily, it's just Brian. <laughs> sorry about that. Well, I guess you got to meet my dog, right? All right, so I'm laying on a lot of color here, mostly because when you color on photopolymer stamps, the ink tends to bead up. So I want to make sure I cover all of that. So I got that good. And then once you color on it, give it a little breath and stamp. There we go. And now I'm going to stamp this one in Pool Party ink. But I don't want it at full strength, so I'm actually going to stamp off a little bit and then come in and stamp on the cardstock because I want a slightly light, lighter shade of that. That looks icy. I like that icy blue look. <laughs> Sharon, yeah, you know what? My dog does that too. When she hears other dogs on TV or in videos, she starts off too. We have been trying so hard to train her not to bark. And so far, it's been going pretty good. But, of course, every time she hears the door close, she thinks somebody new is entering the house, and she needs to warn us, of course, right? Okay, so we have some more die cutting and embossing to do. So, let's die cut these pieces first. Got to line these up. And let's see if I can get both. If I stamped far enough apart, I should be able to get both of these on here. Yep, I'm good. And then I'm going to die cut a smaller snowflake out of this piece of pool party cardstock. Okay, and, and you know what I didn't do? I forgot to put my cutting plate three down first. So let's put that down and readjust this. There we go. Oh, I forgot.
got plate number two. Now there we go. Slide that in. Nothing moved. That's good. And now I should probably stand up. That would have made it a lot easier, wouldn't it? Good luck. Are you telling me that it's hard <laughs> to train my dog? So the one thing I was impressed about with this stamp and cut and emboss machine is that it die cuts intricate dies completely through on one pass. So I don't have to go back and forth multiple times to do that anymore. One crank through and it takes care of it. Okay, so we got our snowflakes. Next up, we are going to use this frame here. And I have a piece of that Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. This is the back side of this particular pattern. I'm going to use this pattern right here. And because I'm die cutting, I'm going to leave my sandwich the same. And I'm going to put my frame on it. I'm trying to get it as straight and centered as I possibly can with my human eye. And then I'll put the cutting plate back on top and we're going to run it through. This frame particularly, or this die particularly impresses me. At first I was a little confused because I thought this was the piece. And I was like, okay, but no, it's this one right here. I love that. And now we're going to do some embossing. So, so I'm going to take a piece of cardstock vellum, and I'm going to take the winter snow embossing folder, and I'm going to place that vellum in the folder. And when you run your embossing folders through the machine, you want to make sure that the hinged side or the closed side goes through first. And that'll just protect um, your embossing folder, give it longer lasting life. And when you're embossing with the machine here, all you have to do is remove the, the second plate that you used for die cutting. Isn't that gorgeous? Let me move the machine out of the way so you can get a good look at it. Look how pretty this is. I love that look. Embossed vellum, that is stunning. Pretty stuff. Now that middle piece that we cut out of there, we are not gonna let that go to waste. Except I think, <laughs> I can't find it. Oh, there it is right in front of me. This piece that we cut out of the middle, we're not going to let that go to waste. Instead, we're going to stamp our sentiment on it and cut it out. So thank you so much is what I'm going to use with Coastal Cabana ink. So I had a request to make a bunch of Christmas thank you cards. And so that's what I'm, I'm doing as I'm doing these demonstrations. I thought, well, I'll make them thank you cards for the person that ordered them. Okay. And now... Um, this, actually, what I'm going to die cut this out with, I'm going to use the stitched nested labels dies, and I'm going to use this one right here. And I'm going to have to try to angle this on here to make it fit on that leftover piece there so I can die cut it out easily. So I'm going to position that there so that when I move this, I know exactly where to, to put it. There we go. Now, because that's a clear stamp, you also could just die cut it first and then go ahead and stamp it afterwards. That would be an option too. All right, now I'm gonna bring back my die cutting machine. Ah, thanks mom. My mom's on. I'm so excited because my daughter's coming home from college this weekend and we're gonna have a cookout. And she requested, I said, what do you want for dinner Friday night? I'll make what you want. She said, buffalo chicken pizza. So that's what we're gonna have. It's a favorite in our house. Okay. I'm going to run this through. Okay. All right, now we got our sentiment. Now we can put our card together. Now, adhesive sometimes can show through vellum, so I'm actually going to glue this part on last. And what I'm going to do instead is assemble all the other layers on top of this so that I know where to apply my adhesive so that it is hiding. Oh, you're not going golfing. Okay. Does that mean I still need to go pick up the family cow order? <laughs> do you still need me to do that? 
we order from a local farmer. Okay, so I'm not, I'm intentionally not putting Stampin' Dimensionals on the left and right sides of these pieces because I'm going to run some ribbon through it. And I want to have that room to do that, that access. So these are regular size Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'll just glue that right into the center of this, I went this way actually, this um, vellum panel, okay, and then this is going to go in the center, but we're going to run ribbon through it, like I said, so we need to wait to adhere that one, and we're going to put our snowflakes on here, so, and we can just use straight up liquid glue, you can use Stampin' Dimensionals, but I didn't want to add too much, um, too much height to this card, because it already has a lot of layers on it, and I was already popping up the, the frame. And then we have this one right here. Now you can use the fine tip glue pen if you want, if you need greater precision in applying this. You can also use glue dots too, that would work. Whoop, got glue on my finger. Stick into it, okay. All right, now I know where to put my adhesive. I can flip it over. I can see where it's going to be hidden. And I'm just going to use some snail, which um, has been replaced with stamp and seal. It operates the same way with the container that you pop the refills in and out, dispense the tape the same way. It's just a stronger hold. And now I'm going to lay it on there like that. And now I'm going to take some of the Snowflake Splendor ribbon, which has an iridescent shine to it. And the way I'm going to do this, um, do I have a length cut out here? I didn't mark down how much of this. Um, okay. But what I'm going to do is take one end and I'm just going to wrap it all the way through. And it's going to go on the inside of my card and come back around. And I'm going to put it back through here again. Okay, and I do this, I keep it on my spool so that I can make sure that I, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to cut really any more than I have to. Get my scissors and cut this off. Let's straighten this out. It's going tied in behind the snowflake there. Okay, now we got it. This is going to get covered by our sentiment piece. And we actually did this little trick in my myst last mystery stamping. So if you played along, you should be familiar with this. And I'm just going to put a little glue dot right there on the bottom and then I pull this one back and if it's still a little bit too long it's okay just um, trim it down some more and glue it and now I'll cut off the excess now we can put this on with dimensionals anytime I glue something over top of a something like lumpy like a ribbon or twine. I like to use dimensional so it doesn't sit right on top of it. It just looks nicer that way. And that is going to go right here in the center. And some of my snowflakes got tucked behind the ribbon so I'll just use my piercer to lift that up. And I have one more thing to add to that, and it's going to be these blue adhesive back gems, the same things we used on the first card. I'm going to put it right in the center of that snowflake there. So that card is done. So those are the two cards we made today. I'll bring out some more samples that I used or that I made with this um, particular set. So this is from Mystery Stamping Night.
and I used Highland Heather for the background because that's another color in the Snowflake Splendor Suite. And this is a card that came with my Christmas card um, kit to go. I used Balmy Blue Glitter, some more of that Snowflake Splendor Designer Series paper. And I added these little snowflake adhesive backed embellishments on either side of that. Then this is actually a card I'm going to be showing on Saturday. I do a video. I upload it to my blog and to YouTube every Saturday. And the card is based upon a sketch that Split Coast Stampers puts out every week. So I make a card. I film a video showing how I made it. And then I also write up a little tutorial for that too. So Saturday, I will have this up on my YouTube channel and on my blog. And I used felt from the Festive Felt Pack to die cut these. And I also, this is another embossing trick. So if you want to see that embossing trick, just wait till Saturday and I'll show you that one. See, there's a lot you can do with embossing folders. I told you. And this one is a slimline card. These fit in a business sized envelope. And I used uh, the Snowman Season set for the cute little snowman and the Merry Christmas. But I used the Winter Snow Embossing Folder here and I die cut some snowflakes from Balmy Blue and Silver Glimmer Paper. And this was another embossing technique where you just rub ink over um, the embossed cardstock. So lots and lots of ideas for this Snowflake Splendor Suite. So what I'm doing is if you place a $35 order with me by this Sunday, September 6th at midnight in my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, I will send you the project kits to make these two cards. So um, I will have things cut and scored for you. You'll, you can use the stamps that I used or you can substitute for what you have on hand to make these two cards. So it's a $35 order in my online store and then I have my stamp and cut and emboss special with the free embossing folder if you order the machine for me. So, and don't forget to share this video because I do a drawing for a prize for that too. So just hit share, type shared in the comments and thank you so much guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. I like stamping with you guys. So, all right. I hope it's sunny where you are. <laughs> Otherwise I will see you next Thursday. Bye.